Okay, we'll start off with the scissors and the tweezers that I use. Um, if you can see these, tweezers on the left, scissors on the right. Now I'm not claiming these are 18th century. They're simply for me a necessity and I get as close as I can to a, uh, a period item so it just doesn't stand out. Now there are a range of tweezers. These tweezers actually are very close to um, 18th century forceps. If you take a look at uh, some forceps they, they uh, sort of built along the same lines. What period these are I have absolutely no idea. Um, I haven't found anything like them as yet, um, but they they suit me. If I want larger tweezers, then I use the uh, round ball mould um, out of my kit that I use for moulding round ball, and um, that will handle uh, much larger splinters. This is the, uh, the chemist's bottle um, that I use. Um, it has a cork stopper instead of a glass one um, because I don't see the need for the weight. And uh, the cork is just to keep dirt out of the bottle, basically. Um, and that's what I use as an eyeglass. This has iodine in it. Again, um, very representative of an 18th century uh, chemist's bottle. Um, you can see it's got a cork and you can see the method I've used to actually secure the cork in with the leather thong. Um, obviously I don't want that cork getting knocked out um, and losing the contents of the bottle. So um, that leather secures it well in my pack. Another, uh, another chemist's bottle, very representative of an 18th century one. Um, you can find originals that look exactly the same as this. Um, in fact, this may even be one, for all I know. Um, don't ask me where I collected these bottles. They're just uh, from uh, second-hand shops, antique shops. Um, they don't tell you uh, what period they are, and very often they don't know themselves, so you can pick them up pretty cheap. Uh, I won't bother showing you what's in here, but it, it's just a, um, a paper wrapped container and I have in there a modern suture needle um, and suture thread. And there's actually some herbs in there as well. Um, but the herbs are, are, uh, are all dried by now, and um, as they need to be before you pack them away in something like that anyway. Um, just as a matter of interest, when we're talking about sutures, you do need something that will grip the suture needle. Um, you would either have to use these, or you would have to use your ball mould. Um, because um, you really need to hang onto that suture needle um, very securely when you're stitching up wounds. The um, thing to remember about when stitching up wounds, if you do have to do it yourself, is make sure that wound is clean. Um, you can get a lot of problems with people doing their own suture work um, out in the wilderness, out in the bush, and it hasn't been cleaned properly and they're literally sealing in um, germs and dirt inside the cut. So um, I've never stitched myself up. Um, I've, uh, whenever I've cut myself open badly, I've actually managed to hold it together and bandage it and so far that's, um, that's worked and left very little scars. Uh, that's a closer look at the, the pouch. It's a very old pouch. Um, I've been carrying it for a lot of years now. And, uh, That's what I carry my medical key. Bandages, as I say, not 18th century. 
um, heavyweight crate bandage. Okay. Um, it's 2.3 meters of this unstretched and a medium weight crate bandage. Uh, again, as I say, if you get cuts, um, slashes, you need to bind them up, you need to stop the bleeding. Um, and if it's snake bite, a bandage is the only thing you can use. Okay? Modern methods, you don't suck it out, okay? You don't wash it, you just put the bandage straight onto a snake bite and you bandage from the, uh, from the snake bite upwards on whatever limb it's on and then back down again over the snake bite and as far as the limb goes and you do that fairly securely and you're not supposed to move but of course if you're out in the wilderness and you don't have any means of contacting anybody um, then you will have to move um, but try not to uh, try not to move fast don't run don't get the blood pumping too much um, and that's about the best you can do. But uh, bandage is very important in any first aid kit. I would also like to stress that woodsmen in the 18th century probably did not carry a first aid kit. Neither did soldiers. Okay? Um, this sort of stuff is just plain common sense to carry with you when you're in the bush. Okay, no matter what period you are reenacting um, or interpreting, um, you need to have a good, a good medical kit, a good first aid kit. Um, this is very skimpy, as I say. If you want to carry a better one, please do. I would advise it. Okay, I'm only showing you what I carry in mine. Um, and so far that has been enough for me. Okay, thank you.